I hope you are having a great morning. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. We're looking here at this principal value integral idea concept designed by this French mathematician Cauchy. I don't know how it's really pronounced, but maybe I want you to attempt to pronounce it. Anyhow, we'll say principal value integrals. This concept is not always presented with regards to some calculus textbooks. For some mathematicians, this is considered perhaps a not a very good idea to introduce because it's a way of dealing with improper type 2 integrals. Those type 2 improper integrals that have been deemed divergent, this is a way of bringing in a finite value with regards to that integral. Consider this specific representation here from minus 1 to 1, 1 or x dx. You know you have a hyperbolic curve. It looks something like this. You also know a vertical asymptote here is x equals 0. When you're looking at this with regards to limits, limit as x were to approach 0 from the right, limit as x were to approach 0 from the left. What do you have with regards to this function, 1 or x? As you approach zero from the right, it shoots up without bounds. Of course, I'm not presenting this very well because this should get closer to the asymptotes, but imagine that the graphic representation is good. Here, you know the limit would not exist, though you could say it approaches positive infinity. Limit as x approaches zero from the left, it approaches negative infinity. But in general, limit as x approaches zero limit does not exist because the right hand and the left hand limits are not the same keeping that in mind we know here limits do not exist so technically for these type 2 improper integrals where you have an infinite discontinuity and we do have it right here involved you'd see from minus 1 we're going up to 0 then from 0 to 1 we have an infinite discontinuity represented by this you would technically say that this integral is divergent and you wouldn't evaluate it but this principal value requires you to view this in another way and you could therefore bring in a finite representation. If you're looking at this from minus one to one, you're looking at all of this area right here and then you're looking at all of this area. Generally, one would say it's divergent and you cannot evaluate it, but this principal value integral concept brings in a finite value. That finite value for this specific representation would be zero because you'd have a cancellation effect. All of this would cancel with all of that. Now, you can very well get away with this cancellation effect simply because this specific representation here kind of has a good symmetry about your vertical asymptote. It has a symmetry similar to that that you would see with odd functions. It is partly represented in this way. I'm just showing you a graphic representation, not exact representation. It has that type of a symmetry. Some of it is a positive with regards to area and the rest is negative with regards to area and you can have some form of cancellation a partial or a complete cancellation based on how these intervals were. Based on that specific fact, you can get away with this idea or this concept. However, if this same representation was minus 1 to 1, now you're looking at 1 or x squared dx. You know the graph of that is something like this. Here you have more of an even function representation and you don't have that cancellation. You're looking in terms of both areas, positive areas and you do not have this cancellation, whether it's complete or partial. So reserve this principal value concept, this Cauchy principal value integral concept for those representations which have this type of an image in terms of graph, where you have some positive, some negative area, and things can cancel out. Whether they cancel out fully or whether they cancel out partially, reserve it for those cases. Let's look at this as if this were a real integral. You're looking at something from minus 1 to 0, 1 over x dx plus. Then you're looking from 0 to 1, 1 over x dx. When you evaluate this as a real integral, what happens? You have a natural log x come over here. You're looking at it from 0 to minus 1 plus natural log comes over here again. You know we can employ here absolute value. We can do all of this with absolute value. Imagine I'm bringing here the x values here in terms of absolute value. And then here I have a 0 to 1. When you do the indefinite integration, you have a natural log of 0 minus natural log of a minus 1. You see I'm bringing in the absolute value plus natural log of a 1 minus natural log of a 0. This right here is undefined. This here is basically saying a natural log of 1 absolute value effect plus natural log 1 and minus natural log 0, which I should mark here as undefined, all right? It's undefined. By means of this single undefined or this other undefined, all of this, if you evaluate this in terms of a real integral, 
you have to say that this entire integral is undefined or it's divergent or the representation it does not exist you can say all of that and we would be good because we have a type 2 integral that's been evaluated in terms of the normal way that it would be evaluated and you would say it's undefined let's put all of this aside evaluate the same integral as this principal value integral and see how things change you bring in a limit over here you're still evaluating it in this way and you're going to do a limit because you know there's a specific vertical asymptote here the vertical asymptote here is x equals zero and you're going to do limit as t approaches zero either from the right either from the left and then you can do all of this as such you'll do minus one t one or x dx plus t one one or x dx and then you can close all of that this limit t approaching zero from the left for this side of the interval and then from the right for the right side of the interval covers all of that it is all covered you have a principal value coming here because we're treating it using this specific concept allow me to erase that now when we evaluate it we have a limit here as t approaches zero again you would write this as t approaches zero from the left t approaches zero from the right but i'm just condensing it all you have here a natural log x which comes out then you know you have a minus one and you have a t and then you know here you have a natural log again come out and then you're looking at it here from a t and a one now when you're evaluating it as a principal value integral how does everything play out you bring in these items you have a natural log t and then you have a minus natural log of a minus one which by absolute value will become a positive one plus natural log here of a one minus natural log here of a t now when you evaluate this in terms of this concept so you can come up with a finite result our goal here is to come up with a finite result not to say that we have divergence what you do is you simply look at this and you cancel out with this because i have a natural log t and a minus natural log t they very well cancel out here i have a minus natural log of a one plus a natural log of a one the absolute value is very well taking care of that minus these cancel out you end up having a zero now in this specific instance when you evaluate this as a principal value integral you have a finite area here of a zero because of complete cancellation you have a complete cancellation of negative and positive areas as you know which would exist with regards to the graphic representation of this you would have some over here and then you'd have some over here and you know you have a hyperbolic curve right over here I'm talking about that complete cancellation. I know this graph is messy, but you know what I'm talking about. And that right there is the entire concept of this principal value. You're bringing something with regards to an improper type 2 integral, which has an infinite discontinuity, and you're aiming for a finite result. I will show you a single other example, then we'll end this video with that. Consider this secant x dx 0 to 5 pi over 4. I've specifically chosen this so I don't have an even representation with regards to either side of a vertical asymptote. I'll have one side which will be slightly greater than the other side. You know when you're looking at a secant x right here, positive pi over 2 vertical asymptotes and it's coming off here of a cosine curve which would be looking something like this. Then you have another representation. We're looking at from 0 to 5 pi over 4 which is 225 degrees. Here's 0, here's 90, 180, 270 and we're looking up to right here. So we have some area which is all of this, all of this. And then we have some area which is all of this going along this asymptote right here. But it's including this little bit of extra portion simply because I didn't end it here at pi. I'm not going from 0 to pi. I'm going it from 0 to 5 pi or 4. So I don't have a clean symmetry with regards to my intervals around my vertical asymptote of pi over 2. So you can see you have a little bit more extra area which will be negative. You have a smaller area here which will be relatively positive our final area with regards to the area about the curve should be a negative area value that's the only reason why i did 0 to 5 pi over 4 and not pi anyhow you can look at this as a real integral and you know your answer would be divergent simply because you're going to go along that asymptote and you'll have divergence but we're going and treating this as if we we're looking for a finite result and let's look at it in terms of a finite result we know here our vertical asymptote is pi over 2 limit as t approaches pi over 2 either from the right and from the left and i'm keeping it general like this i'm looking here at the integral which will look at this 0 to t and then i have a secant x dx plus then i'm going from t here all the way up to 5 pi over 4 225 degrees secant x dx we're going to aim for about we will aim for a finite result 
limit as t approaches pi over 2. Remember, looking at this as a typical type 2 improper integral with the infinite discontinuity here at the vertical asymptote, you would normally get a value here as divergence. Your integral would be a divergent, but we're going for a finite result. Our antiderivative here is a natural log secant x plus tan x. And you know you're having here is 0 to plus. We're again having the same antiderivative secant x plus tan x from t up to 5 pi over 4. Limit is applying to all of that. Now let's open it up. You're going to put the upper lower limit, upper lower limit, and the difference of the two. Imagine we still have this limit represented right over here. We would have here a secant of a t, then we'll have a tan of a t, then we'll have the zero come over here, natural log a secant of a zero plus tan of a zero, then we have this side here, natural log secant of a five pi over four, which is basically a 45 degree angle in the third quadrant, plus tan five pi over four minus natural log secant t plus tan t. Now look at it. We have a positive natural log secant t plus tan t. We have a minus. We will treat this as a principal value integral. Let's put that principal value integral and we'll just cancel that out. Now we can go for a finite representation. When I'm looking over here, secant of zero, you know what that is. Secant of zero is a one. Tan of zero is a zero. All of this boils down here with regards to your natural log of just a single number, which is a one. Now let's come right over here. Secant of five pi over four is the same thing as secant of 45 in the third quadrant. 45 and that would be a minus root two. You can evaluate that on the side, it will be a minus root two. Tan five pi over four is the same thing as a tan of 45. Tan is positive in the first and the third quadrants and it'll be a plus one. And you know you got a absolute value over here. All of this right here is a zero. You're really looking here at a natural log of a one minus root two. If you bring the calculator and involve the absolute value, you got a one minus two root, which is a minus 0.414, but you absolute value that and you do a natural log on that and you have a minus 0.8813. And that's exactly what we wanted a negative area here. A minus 0.8813 would represent the finite area representation of this specific integral right here, which is treated as a principal value integral. And you would be right to say this. Some would agree with this, others will not. The others would say that you have divergence over here and this right here would not be a good value. And that's exactly what we were looking at over here. I guess in a very clean representation, allow me to just show you and erase this over here, what we are looking here with regards to a, a graph. We have a pi over two, we have a pi, and then we have a five pi over four. Secant function, and then part of it would come in this direction, and then eventually it would come over here. You would have another vertical asymptote here, which is out. We're looking here everything from 0 to 5 pi over 4. So you have all of this area adding. Then you have all of this area right over here adding. And this area right here is going out of bounds. This area right here is going out of bounds. But the cumulative effect of this positive area and all of this minus area in terms of a partial cancellation gives you this. And that's what we're talking about. From 0 to 5 pi over 4. And that right there brings us to the conclusion of this entire concept of principal value integrals. You can utilize this or accept this however you want. But in some books it's represented, in other books it's not. And we're talking here about type 2 improper integrals. Type 2 improper integrals which are evaluated by this procedure such that you can convert a divergence outcome into a finite outcome. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.